Welcome to the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I'm your host, Dale Lally, and well, we're a little more than, well, less than a week from the start of the NFL regular season because games start on Thursday of next week. Uh, but of course, uh, Sunday will mark one week out for the majority of the league uh, to uh, begin play in week one. And so I thought it'd be a good time to go over some uh, over and unders for the NFL. I'm looking here at VegasInsider.com. I'm just going to roll right down through these, tell you who I like and uh, who I don't like to uh, surpass their over unders for the 2022 season. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals are at eight and a half wins. I like the under in that one. I think they're an overrated team that overachieved last year. That won't happen again this year. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons are at four and a half wins for the season. That's the second lowest total on the slate here, or tied for the lowest total on the slate, I should say. Uh, I'm going to go over four and a half wins because four and a half wins is, I mean, that be, you'd have to go four and 13. That's be pretty awful. Um, I don't think they're a very good football team, but I think they might go over, but I can see why people want to take the under on that one. The Baltimore Ravens are at 10 and a half uh, wins for the season. I'll take the under on that one. It can be tough to get to 11 wins for any team in the AFC. Uh, but if there's any team that can do it, uh, the Buffalo Bills right now are at 11 and a half wins in the over under. Um, that means Buffalo has to get the 12 wins. And I don't know if they can get the 12 and five. They have one of the league's toughest schedules. Uh, I'm going to go under on the bills at 11 and a half, but I think they win 11 games. Carolina Panthers over under is six and a half. I'll go over with the Panthers I think they win at least seven games this season, maybe more than that, and sneak into the playoffs in, in a weakened NFC. Uh, on the other hand, the Chicago Bears are also six and a half. I'm going to go under on that one. The Bears might be the worst team in the NFL, and uh, that's six and a half wins. I can't understand. I don't see much difference between the Chicago Bears at six and a half, and they're getting six and a half win total. And the Atlanta Falcons at four and a half. I think the Falcons might actually be the better team. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals are nine and a half wins. Remember, they only won 10 games last year. Things had to go correct for them. I'll take them over that. I think they win at least 10 games. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if Baltimore goes under, Cincinnati goes over, and they both win 10 games this season. Cleveland is at eight and a half. I will slam that one all day. Cleveland will be under. Eight and a half wins. I don't know where that total is coming from with Las Vegas. That's crazy talk. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys are at 10 and a half wins. I think they go under that. They've got problems and they are great. It hasn't been a good summer for the Cowboys. The Denver Broncos also at 10 and a half wins. Uh, I don't see the Broncos as an 11 win team. I don't think that's possible for them. I'm going under on the Denver Broncos. The Detroit Lions are at six and a half. I'll take the under on that one. I think the I think the Lions are better this year, uh, but I think six wins might be the uh, where they get to this year. I don't know if they can get to seven. They could. I mean, I'm picking every every team here. I'm not going to be right on all of these, but uh, I, I don't see the Lions winning more than seven games. Let's put it that way. Uh, the Packers are ten and a half wins. They've been over that total in each of the last couple of seasons. I think they go over it again. I think, you know, when you got two games against Chicago, two games against Detroit, uh, you're, you know, you've already racked up four. Uh, that makes it pretty, uh, a lot easier for them anyway. So I think the Packers go over the 10 and a half wins. And remember, the teams in the NFC this year do play nine home games. Well, the teams in the AFC have eight. I think that matters for those AFC versus NFC over unders. The Houston Texans over under is four and a half. I don't think they're a very good football team, but they do get to play in that AFC South, and I don't think that division is very good. They could win a couple of games there, and that already gets them halfway to that total. I think they win five games. I'll take over four and a half wins for the Texans. The Indianapolis Colts over under nine and a half for the same reason that I took the Texans over four and a half wins. I think they get the five. I'll take the Colts to win at least 10 games because they play in that NFC AFC South and, uh, well, there's some uh, bad teams down there. Jacksonville's over-under is six and a half. I think people are putting the cart ahead of the horse a little bit with the Jaguars. Remember, they had the first overall pick in the draft last year. I think they're a better football team. I don't know if they're that much better. I'll take the under on that one. Maybe they get the six wins this year. That would be a pretty nice step forward for them. 
Uh, the next two teams on here are the Chiefs and the Chargers. They're both 10 and a half. I'll take the Chiefs and Chargers over 10 and a half. I think they both win 11 games this year uh, and, and are nipping at the heels of the Bills for the, uh, the number one seed in the AFC. The Rams come in at 10.5, at 10 and a half wins. I think the Rams go under that total. The AFC West and the NFC West match up this year in crossover play. So the Rams got to play uh, the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Broncos this year in addition to their division schedule. So I think those teams are all going to knock each other off there and make that tough. Uh, some of those are going to go over. Some of those are going to go under. I'll take the Rams to go under. Uh, the Raiders are at eight and a half. I'm going under with the Raiders. I don't think they win nine games this season. Same thing with the Dolphins. The Dolphins are at eight and a half. I'll go under that total as well. I don't know that they've fixed that quarterback situation. I think Tua uh, is still a work in progress there. And, uh, well, if he doesn't get it this year, he might not get that chance. New coaching staff down there. A lot of different uh, things going on. I'll go under the eight and a half. Minnesota Vikings are at nine and a half wins. I'm going to go under that total. I think they're a nine-win team. I don't know if they can get to 10, so I'll take the under on that one. The Patriots, eight and a half wins. I'm going to go under on that one. I don't think the Patriots are a very good football team. I think they're a five- or six-win football team this year, and maybe Belichick coaches an extra win out of that group, but I, if, I think if you look at their roster and the talent that they have or lack thereof, you see a, a pretty bad football team. The New Orleans Saints... Over under is eight and a half. I'm going to go over that total. I think they're 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 at least a nine win team, and I think they're potentially a playoff team in the NFC. The New York Jets are five and a half uh, win total. I'm going to go over that number. Uh, I think the Jets are. I think they're at least a six or seven win team. On the other side of the of the that and in the same stadium, the New York Giants over under is seven and a half, and I don't get that one at all. I don't think they're very good. And, you know, if you look back, the Giants over the last 10 years have had one of the worst records, or their first or second a worst record in the NFL over that time span. I don't see this team being drastically better than that. I'm going under on their seven and a half win total. Philadelphia Eagles are at nine and a half wins. I'm going to go over that. I think the Eagles are the NFC East champions this year. I think they win at least 10, maybe 11 games. Uh, the 49ers are nine and a half wins. And I am going to go under on that total, but just under. I think they're a nine-win team. There are going to be some struggles with Trey Lance, and there's going to be uh, you know, some pot uh, potential there for them to uh, pull the plug on him. I don't think that they will. They'll stick with him even through those struggles, uh, but it could end, wind up with them being a nine-win football team, sneaking into the playoffs. Uh, but I think they go under that total. The Seahawks are at five and a half. I think I'm going to go under on that total. I don't think they're a very good football team. And uh, they could get the five wins. I don't see them getting more than five wins, though, with the schedule that they're going to play this season. Tampa Bay is at 11 and a half wins. And I think the Buccaneers go under that total. Uh, they're getting very uh, long in the tooth there, particularly at the quarterback position. And, uh, you know, they've already had some injuries hit that offensive line and some other spots. I'll take the Bucs under the 11 and a half wins. Same thing with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, their total is nine and a half. I'm going to go under on the Titans. I don't think they're a very good football team. I think they're a team that sees a big regression this season. They're not winning nine. They're not winning more than nine and a half games. The Commanders are at seven and a half wins. Uh, I'm going to go just under on that team. That's a good number for that team. Um, I don't know that Carson Wentz is very good. Uh, they've already lost uh, Chase Young for at least the early part of the season. Obviously, the Brian Robinson situation wasn't good for them either. I think they're they're an improving team, uh, but I'll take them to get seven wins this year. And that brings me to the Steelers, whose number is seven and a half, and I'm going to go over on that one, but slightly. Uh, I can see them as an eight or nine win team. We'll see if Mike Tomlin keeps his streak alive for at least having winning seasons. I think the Steelers are going to be in the mix in the in the AFC playoff race this year. I don't know if they get in, but I think they can win eight or nine games, and that'll at least give them a chance as they head into the later part of the season. That's my thoughts on this, the over-unders in Vegas this year. I'm going to take a break. This is the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I'll be back with more right after this.
Welcome back. This is the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. And, you know, uh, we saw the uh, college football make the uh, move to go to a 12-team playoff um, for their national championship each year. And that matters for the NFL. And here's why. Over the last couple of years here, this has probably been something of a phenomenon for about the last five years or so. You've seen some players who are the draft eligible guys whose teams aren't in those college playoff games then opt out of playing in some bowl games. So by increasing that college football playoff from four teams to 12, uh, you know, te- players are going to have to make those decisions. Now, obviously, you know, you're going to see guys play in, in those in those college playoff games and then, okay, they're going to get knocked out in the first game and they're not going to play another game. That's fine. But what happens with those guys? And we've seen this happen. For example, we, you know, we saw it happen with Jamison Williams this year in the national championship game. We've seen it happen with other guys in the past. They play in those in those college football games and they get hurt. So we've seen that happen in recent years where guys have played in those games and gotten hurt. Now, every player that plays in a college football game can get hurt. But, you know, I I think when you when you put the these kind of teams on a field together and they're playing for something as big as as a national championship, guys aren't going to opt out of those bowl games or however they decide to do this with this tournament. I'm all for the tournament. I think it's fantastic. As long as we're not still voting at the end of it, whatever team wins the tournament should automatically be your national champion. I don't care if somebody got upset, they lost the game. That's why we decide these things on the football field, but it's going to make for some interesting decisions here. Do guys play their 10 or 11 games in the regular season and say, you know what? I'm good. I don't need to play anymore. I'm not going to play in these uh, in these bowl games. My team doesn't have a chance to win, beat Alabama in the opening round of the college football playoffs. If I'm from, let's say, I don't know, let's say Pitt. Let's say Pitt gets in. And one of the Panthers just says, I'm not going to do this because, well, I, you know, I, 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 I've done enough. Now the pressure is going to be on that kid. So it's going to be interesting here. Uh, but what this means is that at least two teams – are going to play at least three more football games, exposing some of those top-level athletes to more injuries. Jameis Winston ended up still going, or Jameis uh, Williams still, Jameis and Williams still wound up going in the first round this year. But he should have been the first receiver taken, and he would have been a sure top ten pick. Now he didn't miss that by much this year because the Lions rolled the dice because they had multiple draft first-round draft picks. But what if he had fallen out of the first round? It happens. I get it. Uh, but this is going to re- create some all new, some completely new issues and headaches for NFL talent evaluators. We'll see how this breaks out. You know, th- these things always have unintended consequences. So that's going to be interesting to watch what this one does for the NFL and its draft. That's going to do it for the Dale Alley Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. Enjoy your holiday weekend. We'll come back uh, next week. We'll be talking Steelers Bengals. Lots of good stuff there. And of course, uh, you can listen to our podcasts on Pitt, Penn State, uh, the Pirates, the Penguins, and of course, lots of stuff on the Steelers. We appreciate when you do that. Uh, That's going to do it. I'll talk to you next week. I'm Dale Lally. We'll see you then.